two and a half years ago, almost two and a half years ago, I made a spontaneous decision to move to Mexico. I did tell Verizon, who was my phone service, that I was coming here also. And Verizon assured me that we would be fine for two months in Mexico before we start incurring like crazy charges on our phones. So I was like, okay, that gives me two months in country to figure out the phone situation. Of course, once I got into Merida, I quickly learned that having a phone that works in Mexico is not the same as having a phone that will allow me to use data so yes i could call my family i could call my banks but unless i had wi-fi i could not call uber so pretty much within a week or so of arriving i realized this is a huge problem everywhere i go i needed an uber and so while getting an uber to go somewhere was easy because i could use the wi-fi at the airbnb getting an uber to come home not so easy because maybe the place i happen to be at doesn't have a wi-fi access i could use that sucked and so one afternoon being out and about, essentially without a phone, needing to find an Uber, I found myself at one of the many Merida malls and got myself a Telcel chip. Once I got home, I activated my SIM card and ported my Verizon number through Google Voice so I could still keep my number because that's super important for, you know, two-factor authentication, all that jazz. It was a very easy and lovely process and I made a video about it. Okay, so that was over two years ago, and unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to necessarily come to Mexico and do exactly what I did because Google Voice no longer allows you to port your number or to even get a US number unless you're physically in the States and not just anywhere in the States, Alaska and Hawaii. Apparently, you guys are not considered US enough for this service, so. If you are currently not in Mexico, if you're still in the US, now's the time to do it. Get that Google Voice because you're going to want it for sure. I would love to know anyone who's done this recently. I believe this started to change about a year ago, February, March timeframe of 2021. So I did it back in 2019. It is all about timing. Now, if you're in the US, porting your US number to Google Voice is super easy to do. It's a one-time $20 fee. I highly, highly recommend it. And especially because, fun fact, you can take your Mexico Telcel number and use it in this state. I literally have a friend who was in Medida with me for a year and a half. She had a Telcel number. She already got rid of her you know, Verizon or whoever she used to have. She had to move back to the US, but fortunately she's still able to use her Mexican phone in the US. So you do have to make sure to set yourself up to make payments to Telcel via the internet as opposed to like some people go to an OXO or to an actual Telcel kiosk every single time so they can pay for usage. But if you set it up to where you pay for everything online, you should be fine in the US because um, yeah, if I ever move back to the US, why would I ever go back to Verizon where I was paying $150 a month for me and Alex? And that was back in 2019, guys. Uh, it's probably more expensive now. So yeah, tell sell for the win. Some things you should know before you port your number from Verizon or AT&T or whoever your service provider is, you will have to have paid off your phone already and you will have to not have a contract with those companies because you'll essentially be breaking your contract with Verizon or whomever and whatever penalty they have for breaking the contract, you will have to pay immediately slash if you owe money on the phone, you will have to pay the rest of that phone off. And sometimes not only do you have to pay the rest of the phone off, but they literally have an early payment like penalty fee. And so you might be paying a little more than you plan. Something to take into consideration if you are going to port your number over. Again, when I did it, my phone was paid off, my phone was unlocked. I didn't have a contract with Verizon, so it was super easy for me, but something to keep in mind. I will say, as a general rule, it's probably going to be more financially beneficial for you to rip that Band-Aid off and pay off your phone. You do the math in terms of whether it's worth it for you. In the long run, Google Voice is definitely the way to go because you still want to keep your two-factor authentication on all your bank accounts, on all your social media, etc. So. Yeah, port that US number over. And especially as a traveler, you know, I'm in Mexico now, but who's to say I'm gonna be in Mexico forever? Just to keep it safe, I plan on keeping my one US number for all my services. And luckily Google Voice allows me to do that with a one-time 
$20 fee. Like it's absolutely worth it. And if I couldn't have used Telcel in the US, like if for some reason that goes away, so long as I can use Google Voice for free, like I would find some other prepaid plan to keep my cost low because 150, I'm never going back to that. I'm never going back to that. I do not have time for you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about Google Voice and how that works. I essentially have an app on my phone called Google Voice. It technically allows me to have incoming calls as well as voice messages. I can see my missed calls. I have my contacts forwarded to my Google Voice. What I don't do with my Google Voice that a lot of people do is I don't forward that number to another number. One, because I would have to forward my Google Voice to a US-based number. Nobody in the US calls me. I really only need my number for two-factor authentication and for, you know, if I buy something on Amazon, they'll send me a message sometimes. So like, it's, it's really useful for a lot of different things, but I don't need anyone to call me physically. Now, that being said, my dad does sometimes forget that I've changed numbers and that I have a Mexico number. And so if he does call me on Google Voice, I will still get a message saying that I missed his call. If he leaves a message, I will sometimes get a transcription of that message. The transcription, honestly, not super reliable. Most of my my messages do not get transcribed. The best transcription comes when I get a phone call from a bot, which are the messages I care the least about. But anyway. I will see that my dad called and then I'll just call him back. He does know my Mexican phone number so he doesn't freak out when he sees it. I get free calls to Mexico, the US and Canada via my Telcel number so I don't have to worry about paying anything extra and I believe my dad's phone plan also allows him to call Mexico for free so it all works out in the end. But normally to communicate with actual people I know, I use text messenger either on Google Voice or on my Mexican number, whichever one that person has, or my apps. So I can use of course Facebook Messenger, I'm a huge fan of Marco Polo, a lot of people use Skype as well to communicate with friends and family. We'll talk about Skype in a minute because Skype is actually pretty cool. There's just so many ways to communicate nowadays that travel life is much, much easier than it used to be. Now that being said, if for some reason your family's phone plan only allows them to call US numbers for free, like calling Mexico or wherever you've chosen to go, is too costly for them, I highly, highly recommend getting a Skype account, a Skype number. It costs about $52 a year, so well, well worth it. And if you've got the Skype app on your phone, you have to be logged in, you have to have Wi-Fi slash data left on your phone to use the Skype app. But if those things are in place, you can actually get a ring on your phone via Skype so you can answer any calls from friends and family or, you know, business calls, etc. Now, to make a phone call through Skype is actually Skype to go. So that is an additional fee. Depending on where you're at and where you're calling, Skype will charge a different amount. I'm told it's very reasonable, but again, I've never actually had to use it myself. Even your bank has like a chat service that you can do via their website. So I've never, I've never had to call and speak to a person, but it is nice to know that if for some reason my situation is super weird and I want to call someone, Skype to go is a really easy way where you don't have to worry about like, do I dial plus one? Do I dial plus zero zero nine? Like all those things of how to make an international phone call, Skype avoids all of that. So if you can use Skype, why bother with Google Voice? Well, one, Skype does not allow you to port a number over to Skype. Skype gives you a huge range of numbers you can choose from, but if you wanna keep your old number, you can't just move that over to Skype. So that's a reason to use Google Voice. And again, Google Voice is free with the exception of the one-time $20 fee. If you don't live a life where you have to have actual phone calls, Google Voice will suffice. Skype is just really great to have if you need to actually make a phone call and, and actually talk to somebody in real time. That's where Skype can come into play. but Skype just doesn't do all the features that Google Voice does. And for Telcel, Telcel is the most widely used phone service here in Mexico. There are other companies you could use aside from Telcel, but again, especially if you don't know exactly where you want to be in Mexico, having Telcel is really helpful because you'll probably be able to use it anywhere in Mexico, as opposed to the other companies, which are a little bit more limited in terms of area coverage. To get a Telcel chip, there's a lot of stores that sell Telcel cards, as well as allowing you to reload. And there are actually Telcel stores, full Telcel stores that you can go to for all of your needs. You should expect to pay a little less than 200 pesos, so a very reasonable price. And for myself, when I reload every month, I usually reload for 150 pesos. Although if I know I'm gonna be like traveling or doing a lot of things, I might bump it up to 200 pesos a month, 
because I'll get more data. Now, apparently you don't have to register your number. You can just, every time you want to reload, you can just go to a kiosk and pay them every month. However, if you want to use your Telcel number in the US, you might as well register and have everything set up so that when you go to the US, you're not scrambling to figure out how to register. Again, registering is pretty, pretty simple. They just need your name, the phone number, your email for notifications, and then of course your payment method. There are four ways to reload. You can go to the website, metelcel.com. You can go to the metelcel app, which I literally just now downloaded. It looks very similar to the website, so I'm sure it works the same. When you're out of minutes, you will also get a text message that lets you know that you're out and you can click the link it gives you, follow that link and reload it. Again, I've only done this one time. I did have to put my card information in. I hope it memorizes the number the next time it happens, but either way, very, very simple process. And last but not least, you can physically go to a store. Now, I will say there are times that the website has been down. I have had moments where I've gone to the website via my phone. So not using the app, but just going to metelcel.com on my phone. And for whatever reason, maybe the connection wasn't good, I don't know but I've had it not work when trying to reload minutes on the internet on my phone. Karen has had moments where she wasn't able to use that link to pay. Once when we first got to San Cristobal, I went to the store and he was having a hard time recharging my phone because my number is from Merida. So he had to do it on his phone instead of doing it on their machine, whatever machine they usually charge in. So when I'm out of Salto, I get a text message, right? And I'm supposed to click for it to take me to the place where I'm gonna recharge or choose what plan I want, right? When it takes me there, I have to disconnect from Wi-Fi. But in the neighborhood I live in, there's no phone connection. So I can't use Wi-Fi and I can't use phone connection. So there's no way to recharge from my house. And then when I try to recharge from here, it declined all the cards I try to use. Uh, just know it's not necessarily 100% perfect, but I would say 90% of the time I have no issues when going to metelcel.com. And it's funny because I actually followed Karen just to see the process of doing it in person because I've literally never had to do it in person. But the first place we went to... And she had to go to a second place to get more data added. I'm assuming that these different kiosks, they must pay for the minutes in bulk maybe. Like they have to be making a profit somehow. And so it is possible that you'll go to a place that normally allows you to pay for minutes, but you know, maybe on that particular day, they happen to be low or happen to be out. Yeah, that's the thing. So as I'm editing, I realized that I did not address the question that I get asked probably the most, which is when I'm not able to get on the internet, with Telcel. So the way Telcel kind of markets itself is by number of days. It's a two day plan, it's a week plan, it's a, a 30 day plan, 28 day plan, whatever. And it keeps saying the word unlimited, which means very different things to us in the US. And so what they mean by unlimited is that you've got unlimited calls, unlimited text. There are certain like social media apps that you've got unlimited access to, and those are for the entire 30 days. You should not have issues with those for the 30 days. However, when it comes when it comes to data, you're buying a very specific amount of gigabytes. So if you use those gigabytes a lot, if you use it frequently, then you can absolutely run out before the 30 days, before the week, etc. And at that point, you just need to buy more. Now, what I generally do is I get back onto metelcel.com and I buy another friend package. If I buy it today, then I've got, you know, another month essentially before my minutes run out, before I'm not able to make phone calls. But really what I tend to care about more is whether I'm using too much of the data. And so really, anytime I run out of data, that's when I buy more minutes. Sometimes it's just shy of the month, sometimes it's middle of the month, depending on what I've been doing, but you can very, very easily go to metelcel.com and add more minutes, or you can go to any Telcel provider and they can uh, sell you more data as well. The phone is still good, the number is still good. You just may not have any data left, which is of course a huge deal because that's probably what we use our phones for more than anything else.
I hope that makes sense. Okay guys, I hope you found this super, super helpful. Let me know your questions below or let me know if you're in Mexico and you've used a different method to maintain your phone. I know one YouTuber who apparently still uses AT&T, but he does it in a slightly different way, which I found super interesting. He pays for the entire year in advance or sometimes for two years in advance, which I find crazy. I really don't plan ahead that far. So I don't like the idea of paying for the next two years, even though there's a pretty big chance I'll be somewhere in Mexico for the next two years. But nevertheless, that's his method, which I thought was really, really economical, much more economical even than what I'm doing, but at about $10 a month, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with paying monthly. Now, what I really like about his method is, for myself, I usually find out that I'm out of minutes when I'm out in the town, needing to use my phone, and then for some reason my internet's not working. And then I'm like, has it been a while since I paid? I might be out of data. So it's almost always a super inconvenient time. Again, I do get messages from Telcel that lets me know I'm out, but I often ignore them. And so usually it's when I'm in a pickle that I suddenly realize uh, I don't have data, in which case I have to find data in order to be able to do the thing that I want to do. So I like his method. He's willing to pay in advance uh, for the entire year or two, and he doesn't have to worry about running out of minutes like during the year you know, every month. So kind of a cool idea, but definitely let me know if you're using a different method or his method or whatnot, because I'm always interested in the many, many different ways there are to handle the phone situation while you travel. And so now that you've got an idea of how you might handle the phone situation in Mexico, here is a video letting you know how I handle renting a home here in Mexico. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend. And let me know what you think about my apparently sometimes controversial method of getting a place to rent.